Tammy had a blood transfusion done to, to buy time so I could get home from conference and we can get the boys there to see her. It was near midnight in an empty animal hospital in Blaine when we made the decision for no more treatment and to just wait and see. On Friday, if she hadn't yet died, we would take her home. But on Friday morning, the hospital called and said that they had an extra bag of of blood that was about to expire and that they would like to do a transfusion for free to give her another chance. My heart leaped for joy. Now, I don't know what's going to happen. They did that transfusion, and, and it may be that, that it saved her life. It may be that she will still die. I don't know. But I can tell you, it was not Hakuna Matata in our house this week. Things seemed to go from one bad thing to another, and yet God was there in all of it, even in that pet hospital to see us through. And God was there for Elijah, too. Even if it looked like his life just got worse. Because after weeks of eating this questionable food but having this wonderful bubbling brook, the brook ran dry. And Elijah was faced with another crisis. Verse 7. Sometime later the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Go at once to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I've commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. So the brook has dried up, and Elijah is sent to Zarephath and Sidon. It's out of the frying pan and into the fire. Queen Jezebel's dad is king of Sidon. It's enemy territory. And who will protect him there? Who has God chosen to be his great defender in the midst of this famine and in enemy territory? One old widow. God has chosen just one old widow to save Elijah's hide. Oh, well, maybe she inherited a fortune. Maybe she's sitting on a whole stockpile of food. Elijah follows God's leading, and he heads off to Zarephath. Verse 10. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take it home and make a last meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. God, what are you doing? This woman has nothing. This woman has nothing to take care of Elijah, nor herself. She's down to her last can of Spam. Just enough for a pathetic meal for her son and herself, and then to starve to death. You call this help God? What kind of God are you? Those are the things we often think when we're in situations like this. Ah, but don't look with the world's eyes. This woman has no strength, no money, not even a last can of spam. But she has compassion, and she has faith in God. And that's enough for all of them to live. Verse 13, Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you've said. But first make a small cake of bread for me from what you have, and bring it to me, and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. And so there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. God has seen them through. God has taken care of them. Again, though this is not easy street, being in God's care doesn't mean that life is easy. 
In fact, while Elijah was staying with her, the woman's son gets so sick that he nearly dies. In fact, it looks like he has died. When Jesus tells us not to worry because God will take care of you like the birds of the air and the flowers of the field, he's not promising that our lives will be easy or that following God will, will lead to no problems. In fact, elsewhere he promises us that we will have problems when we follow God, just like Elijah had problems when he did God's will and told King Ahab about the drought. Being in God's care does not mean that everything is easy or that it's hakuna matata. Life with God is not problem-free, but Jesus does promise that through it all, God will be faithful. And God will see us through whatever this life brings until he brings us safely home to him. It wasn't easy for Elijah and the widow and her son, but God was there, even if they did have to eat the same thing over and over again for weeks on end, like an endless menu of spam. God was there for them. And even if things didn't work out exactly as they would have chosen, still they found themselves in God's care, and God saw them through until the rains fell again and the famine was over. Now, I don't know what this week is going to bring for you. I hope it brings blue skies and sunny beaches and anything to eat other than spam. But we don't know. It may bring broken cars, sick dogs, and yet another meal, the same old thing. You may even be down to your last can of spam. But trust me, Trust Elijah and the widow. God will be faithful. So even if it's not hakuna matata, no worries for you. Let each day's trouble be enough for the day. And trust in the God who watches over the birds of the air and the flowers of the field. And even more, who watches over you and me. Seek first the kingdom of God. And maybe you'll find that everything else you need is taken care of as well. Or to put it another way, maybe you find that what God gives you is exactly what you need and is, in fact, the best you could have asked for. Elijah got raven food. An old widow got flour and oil. And a battalion in Afghanistan got spam. But God saw them through. In fact, the sergeant major of that battalion reported that that meal of deep-fried spam was the best meal that he'd ever eaten in his, entire, in his entire life. And that when that meal was served, troop morale was higher than it had ever been. Go figure. <laughs> Deep fried spam. Who would have thunk it? This week may not go as you planned. It might be a week of spam. And you may wonder what God's doing. But don't worry. God has been and always will be faithful. Let us pray. Oh Lord, see us through this week. We do pray for bright skies and sunny days and for things to, to fall into line in pleasant ways. But even if they don't, see us through. Help us to trust in you and know that you will care for us. You've created beautiful flowers in the fields and, and wonderful birds that soar through the air. And you create beauty in our lives and help us to soar. Through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen.